auto scroll camera. Today you can see there straight away we've got the camera auto scrolling. I have got no control whatsoever on this camera. Now this would be good if you're doing a maybe a side scrolling platformer game, maybe you're doing a space shooter, maybe you're doing a little racing game where you're just going up and down or through obstacles or some sort of timed thing. Now let's get into the programming. Now this is, is getting a bit more complicated than the first person and third person uh, tutorials that we've done last time. So if you've missed them, make sure you go back and check them out. Hit the subscribe button because we're going to be taking you in depth with Game Builder Garage. So you've got your game screen. Now this is the thing that you are basically seeing. When I press the uh, start or the, or the plus button now, it's going to take you and that game screen is going to be everything that you're seeing on the screen. And what we're doing here, we've got the X, the Y and the Z coordinates. Now, if I just delete this line, and I take that to the Y coordinate, you can see it auto scrolls differently. Let's just get that back onto the X coordinate. So we're doing a side So we're doing a side scrolling game. Now, this is where it gets a little bit confusing. So we've got a constant. We've got this. I think it's a is it a calculator counter and we've got the map now the counter just gives you <laughs> basically a counting uh, value now there's different modes that you can have it on and we'll be going a bit more in depth into these because we're going to be making some AI enemies marching back and to and we're going to be using the counter quite a bit for that but for now you just have it on no limit and that'll just count continuously up. That'll just keep going and going and going when we give it a value, we give it an input. So, make it a bit bigger. When you get a value there, it counts up, a value there, it counts down, and then that resets. So if you put any value in there, it'll reset, and it'll reset to a specific number that you can set as well. So we just put a constant uh, node on there, put on count up now map is what we're going to do this is your sort of scale now whatever you put in and out you can change see there now see how that number's going up a lot quicker than that one if we go into the settings so when it goes from 0 to a thousand the range is 0 to 47 you can see down here calculation result so it's it's basically a scale a way to to control the speed of, of the change of numbers so you can see the the uh, speed of the auto scroll there if we change this map and we go basically like a one-to-one -one, you can see it's a lot faster and we went off the game screen there so if we go one to 500 is basically half, 1 to 250, somewhere here, which is quarter. And then if you take it right down, and say you went 1 to one to 7, you can see that is going to be a really slow auto scroller. You can also change it by changing the, the rate of the constant, and that'll change the speed that the counter goes up. But we're not going to be not going to be getting into that. It's a lot easier to control it with the map because you can see what is happening now other ways that you can do the auto scroll you've got the tilt input again this is this is, ju is just sort of um, different ways that you can count so if we get rid of the constant now I can't actually show you this because I'm using a, <laughs> a bad example because I'm using it in docked mode the tilt isn't working but the rate of tilt can change the speed of the auto scroll you can have it going so if you tilt to the left then the screen will go left and if you have it tilting to the right the screen will go right that's a good one for you guys to try out while you've got it in handheld mode now you can also um this is a, a sort of hard um 
hard example to explain. Now you can have it auto scroll when something breaks. So we've got we've got this object break which is box cylinder. So when it detects a broken cylinder, you can have it auto scroll. So if we put if we put a box on screen. Where's the screen? We put a box on the screen. And we put a person on screen. And we make the box distribute. Right, okay. Oh, we need to do right. Okay, so when we move the left stick, left and right, the person will walk into the box. <laughs> Person's not destructive. There. Now when the box breaks, we go on the settings to this. Now, we've got it checking for box. When the object that the nodon is checking are destroyed anywhere in the world, the nodon will output the number of destroyed objects destroyed in that moment. By combining it with a counter nodon, we can create setups where uh, certain numbers... So it's, it's like keeping a score, but when you change that, it, it will... <laughs> it will counter up. And now if we change if 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 we change the map for a one to one ratio did you see that did you see what happened there now when you broke the box or when i broke the box when i broke the box the screen scrolled and this is a really good way where if you make a level and you want you want the screen to scroll see how it scrolled a bit and a bit more and a bit more now if you've got enemies on the screen and you want the screen to move when the enemies are destroyed then that is a good way to have have that set up now it doesn't move much but if we change the map because you're only giving it a, a a count up of one so that's only moving the screen say one tile or one square but if we change the input so it every for every 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 okay every one it will move say for every one it'll move 10. so if we give it a a signal there for every one then it moves 10. <laughs> see so you could literally have it as different screens and the camera moves to a different part and you could have something else there. And if I move to the right a bit now, you can see the screen moved and the screen moved again. So that is another awesome way that you can control the auto scroll. I really like that one. So they have it for the custom auto scroll. You can see that we've got the game screen there. Now the game screen's coordinates, X, Y, or Z, depending on where you want to move the screen, are connected basically into any sort of input. Now we've got it going through this map, which is a scalable uh, uh, node on. So whatever you've got going in, you can you can multiply it, or you can you you can make it so that. 0 to 1 equals 0 to 1000. You can change the range of the output. We've got a counter, which every time that you give it an input, it will basically count. And you can make it count up, you can make it count down, and then you can give it a a, a reset. So maybe, 
maybe let's do a button press. Let's press A. There we go. Button press A is going to reset it. Break one, you can reset with A. Break one, reset with A. Break one, reset with A. Now that reset will go to its default position. So this starting value here is where the reset will go to. You can do some pretty advanced things in this game. So hopefully you're going to hit that subscribe button as we teach you all about Game Builder Garage and everything to do with the programming side of it. Hope you're enjoying it as much as I am and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.